Marcos Rodriguez Pantoja grew up with a family of wolves. He recalls how he joined the pack at the age of seven in a remote valley in the Sierra Morena. I saw a few wolf pups and I played with them. I followed them into their den and fell asleep. And then the vixen came and gave me the eye. So I squeezed into a hollow in the rock. And then she came up to me and began licking me. And with that, I belonged. Today, Marcos is 66. He lives in Rante, a small village in the region of Galicia. He had to work hard to learn how to speak. He's never quite grown accustomed to civilized life, despite its comforts. Everything is very simple here. You make fire with a lighter, not with stones. That's how everything is. But out there you can do whatever you want. You don't have to wear clothes. Everyone here says, just look at this pair of pants. These shoes don't match the pants, the shirt, blah, blah, blah. People just don't leave you alone. Marcus was always something of an outsider, finding it hard to fit in with the villagers. At first people regarded him as a wild man, uncivilized, who told far-fetched stories. I'd like to believe everything he says, but some things are still hard to believe today. At first I didn't believe him, but then they made a movie about his life. The film tells how Marcus was beaten by his stepmother. His father couldn't feed the family, and the child was given over to a shepherd who died shortly after. Marcus was left to fend for himself and ended up hunting with wolves until he was 19. Then the police brought him out of the mountains. He was sent to a convent in Madrid where civilization was forced upon him. But the nuns failed to eradicate all the traces of his past existence. And so Marcos remained an outsider with a story that defied belief. The film, directed by Gerardo Olivares, tries to show the truth of Marcos's life story. The movie ends with a personal appearance by Marcos himself. The film did alter people's perceptions of Marcos. People in the village changed. They took me aside and asked for forgiveness. I said, what should I forgive? You haven't done me any wrong. Oh, yes, I have. I thought you were someone you weren't. Excuse me. People's reactions have been good for Marcos. For years, he only really trusted animals, like his dog, Lobita. With people, if you have no money, you're no one. You don't have anything to eat, nothing. But out in the wild, you can look for something to eat on your own. If you want fish, you catch one in the river. If you want meat, well, I had it easy. I just howled, and the wolves came and we went out on a hunt. I got the pelt, and there was a piece of meat for each of us. One of the few people he's close to is Manuel. Manuel accepts Marcos as he is. Marcos still has some unusual ways about him. He goes through phases. Sometimes everything is okay, and sometimes not so much. Then I bite. <laughs> Marcus loves children, perhaps because they have always believed him. But he was never able to start a family of his own. I would have been very proud. Wow. If someone came to me and said, Papa, that would be great. But that's not how it was. I didn't have a real home. I had no security. And that's not the way to get a wife. 
All his life, Marcos has been a loner. And though people now believe his life story, he doesn't feel at home with them. The film didn't change that. The only place he ever felt at home was with his wolf pack. Ah! Uh. 